This video is sponsored by Squarespace. My friends, it is the most wonderful time of the year in the miniature painting hobby, and I thought I would take some time this month to update my orc army. If you watched last week's video, you might already be aware that I have joined a local Warhammer club and we're doing a little bit of an escalation league. When deciding which army to play, I of course had several different options. I have a few different armies around the 500 point range. I was heavily considering updating my Sisters of Battle army, but there have just been so many cool orc and goblin models released over the past few years that I haven't painted yet, both from Games Workshop and from third party suppliers, that I thought it would be fun to put together an orc army using just a few new models, but also trying to incorporate all of the models I already own. Part 1. Repurposing Old Models If you're a channel veteran, you might remember my Grot Bag Scuttlers project. This was a sort of goblin air force project that I put together a few years ago for Age of Sigmar of all things. Yes, there is lore precedent for goblins having flying machines like this in the Age of Sigmar universe. Look it up, they're called Grot Bag Scuttlers. But I do admit that these units do look like they would fit in a lot better into the 41st millennium. I did use a lot of 40k orc parts to kitbash these together. So when I decided to put together this orc army for Warhammer 40k 10th edition, I thought it would be fun to try to repurpose these as some sort of orc units. Taking a look at the current rules and what orcs have in their army, I thought that these Grot rockets would work pretty well as Defcopta proxies. They are armed with projectile weapons as well as melee weapons just like Defcoptas, but they are on an oval base that is one size too small, unfortunately. I don't think anyone's going to care that the base sizes are just a little bit smaller than they should be, but if my new friends are worried about that, I'm happy to rebase these new Defcoptas. And regardless, that's 400 points of orc models done and dusted. Meanwhile, our big scuttle boss on Skymech, as I like to call her, is missing a few parts from various moves since I originally built her but I think she could be easily repaired. I think I do have the original parts somewhere or I could use new parts. And I do think she could be used as some sort of large flying unit in an orc army. This model was originally kit bashed out of the orc aircraft kit and a death dread kit, as well as a few Karajan overlord parts. So looking through the rules, I thought this would work pretty well as either one of the orc mechs or one of the orc planes. However, it seems like none of the orc mechs have the flying keyword, and this is clearly a flying machine. So I think we're going to repurpose this unit as a simple orc plane, probably a DACA jet. And if we do that, we will need to rebase the unit like the, the other ones. We'll see if my friends care about that. But regardless, if we are calling this a DACA jet, that brings our list up to 535 points. Pretty good base for an orc army. However, we do have one more unit that I think we can add to the army, and that is my Orc Commandos kill team that I painted up in a McDonald's Halloween scheme a few years ago on the channel. Links to all of the videos where I made these are down in the description, by the way, if you want to see how I made any of these. I painted these up almost three years ago at this point, but I'm still pretty happy with the paint jobs on these. Unfortunately, their color scheme and basing doesn't really match with the rest of the Grot Air Force models that I have, so I really have two or possibly three options here. And that is to either rebase these, repaint the bases in that sort of blue-green scheme to make them fit with the rest of the Grot Air Force, or if I'm rebasing the Grot Air Force anyway, which it seems like I'm, I might have to anyway, all the base sizes are wrong, Maybe I will repaint all of those bases in this more orangey scheme. Let me know down in the comments which one you think would be better. I'm still a little bit undecided. Regardless of what I choose, this brings our core list up to 670 points. Pretty good for just rounding up a bunch of random models that I already owned and painted throughout the years. But of course, we still need a leader for this army, a big boss, if you will, which brings us to the first purchase that I've made for our new orc army, the Deathkiller Wartrike. 
when researching what's popular in current orc lists, I was looking up what would go well with def coptas, airplanes, and orc commandos, and it seemed like the answer was pretty clear. Buy a def killer wartrike, make that our army's leader, and then use the detachment rules for Cult of Speed, which brings our army up to exactly 750 points, which will be the point limit, I believe, for our first Warhammer 40k game. As I was putting this list together, I was thinking it would be cool to have the lore of this army be that it's sort of two armies in one. The Grot Air Force perhaps needs to hire some Orc mercenaries because they don't have any ground troops of their own, so they hire an Orc biker gang from the local planet, led of course by our new Orc warlord on Death Kill a Wartrike, who I think is going to be named Rucka Thrillamust. I think that Big Boss Thrillamust is the leader of a local Orc biker gang and that he needs some air units, so he also thinks that this alliance with this Grot Air Force would be a good tactical decision. But do you know what else would be a good tactical decision? That's right, it's building a website using this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website and hosting platform that I have been using for just a little bit over a decade now for all of my website needs. And no matter what kind of website you want to build, Squarespace is super easy to use. They have a ton of ready-made flexible templates that you can customize and update easily as often or as much as you like. No coding or technical knowledge required. I've been using my current Squarespace website to host a gallery of my painted miniatures, all of my painting reference documents, as well as an online store, which was super easy to build, really easy to update, and accepts a variety of flexible payment options. So if you need a website, why not check out squarespace.com today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Dana Howell for 10% off your very first purchase of a website or domain. Part two, painting the war trike. I started out by basing the war trike using a combination of my typical basing methods, gluing down a mix of polystyrene bits, floral wire, and that foil that comes on pill containers and cover the whole thing in glue and sand. Notably, I have started mixing in polystyrene shavings left over from other projects into my basing sand mixture to look like bits of scrap and debris, and I highly recommend it. I think it adds a little bit of nice variety to the ground scatter of an apocalyptic wasteland. And once all of this was dry, I primed it in black with my airbrush. I decided to paint the bike and the riders separately this time to make things a little bit easier. I don't typically do sub-assemblies, but with larger vehicles like this, I do tend to make exceptions. I even painted the base itself separately so I could more easily get to the vehicle's undercarriage. I decided I wanted everything to have a bit of a rusty look to begin with, so I gave everything an overspray with one of my favorite colors in the Pro Acryl range, Mahogany. For the vehicle, I used this more sparingly, adding a variety of rusty areas. While for the base and the orcs and goblins, I use this as more of a general overspray, almost like a zenithal, because I think it works well as a base for all of the colors we're going to put on these figures next. After I was done with this, the next step was to dry brush everything with a metallic dry brush. And for this, I used a big wide brush and one of my new favorite metallic colors, Boiler Black from the new range of P3 paints that Steamforged Games sent me a little while ago and I still haven't done a proper review for. But if you're curious, here is my mini review of the P3 paints. They're good. They're a little bit glossy for my liking. For most applications, I don't really like to use a satin paint, but they are pretty fun to blend with. I like the selection of colors. And my favorite thing out of the entire paint line is the metallics. These metallics are nice and thick, so they work well for dry brushing, but I like that they don't only work well for dry brushing. They also work well for nice smooth applications. Here I am using the darker silver color, which I think works great for this sort of rusty metal. 
And as a side note, if you do want to see me using these P3 paints and experimenting with them more thoroughly, go and check out my recent video where I paint all those HeroScape figures. Anytime that I don't specify the paint line, it's P3 paints. When I'm saying unspecified paint line, what I really mean is P3 paints. So if you want to see me using these paints and what they feel like, that's probably a pretty good indication. But anyway, this is an orc video. Moving on to our rusty metal look, I mixed together a 50-50 mix of Pro Acryl Mahogany and Burnt Red to create a rusty red color and added a bunch of Speed Paint Medium to this mix to help it flow into the recesses of things. I then applied this to any parts of the metal where I wanted a more rusty red tinge, dabbing it on like a sponge in some places and using it more like a wash in other places. After this, I did the same thing with a 50-50 mix of mahogany and orange paint, thinned down once again with Speed Paint Medium to add a second, more selective coat of orange rust to a few areas, mostly just keeping to the crevices with this color. For the orc skin tones, I varied it up from orc to orc to goblin, and for the big boss, I started with a base of camo green. Again, you can see the mahogany makes a great undertone for this. And I then mixed in some bright yellow green for successive highlights. For the orc driver, I used the same method, but mixed in some of this yellow ochre to each of the colors to give our boy a slightly different skin tone, more of an olive green look. And finally, for the goblin, I gave him a base of regular old primary green and then highlighted up with lime green. To finish things off for all three of these skin tones, I took a little bit of Pro Acryl Plum and added this to just the undersides and crevices of the skin areas, blending it in to add a little bit of warmth and shadow to really finish things off. I then painted all of the orky clothing and accessories using autumn orktober themed colors like burnt red, rusty orange, yellow ochre with occasional pops of black and or ivory. For the base, I kept things pretty simple, dry brushing on successive layers of rusty orange and yellow ochre since I'm still not sure if I want these bases to match the Grot Air Force or the Orc Commandos. I then spent quite a bit of time picking out various metal plates on the trike, painting them in the same Orktober colors as the Orc's clothing. And speaking of the clothing, I added a few details to the Orc's clothing at this point, such as a hand-painted checkerboard pattern on the orc's collar piece here, and a plum color to the glasses with an orange highlight, just because I feel like this driver guy is pretty stylish. After this, I spent a ton of time edge highlighting all of the metal edges using various shades of gray, uh, even adding in some lighter silver metallics to a few points where I wanted the entire piece of metal to look less rusted, like on some of the weapons. Beyond this, I spent quite a while adding various details and edge highlighting, but in between all of this, I decided our war boss needed just a little bit of extra flair. So I hand painted on a plaid pattern to his vest to really give him that butch fall look. Painting plaids is pretty easy to do, you just add a lot of lines in similar colors onto a piece of clothing, and then to finish things up, you glaze your main color, in this case our main color is red, on top of this to tie the whole thing together. Once this was done, I spent a little bit more time adding some finishing touches, spending several hours at least just doing edge highlighting on the metallics as well as using my brush sort of like a sponge in places to add spots of mahogany as sort of rust patches. And that's basically it. This is our 750 point orc starter army, which sort of matches our commandos color scheme, but also sort of matches the grots color scheme. 
all I would have to do is add a little fade if I did want this base to match the grots, but I could also change the grots to match the more orangey basing of the orc commandos. Let me know down in the comments which you like best and that will help influence my decision. Also, if you're an orc player, definitely let me know down in the comments which units I should add next to this orc army. I'm thinking maybe some bikers or maybe some standard boys. I want to stay away from buying any of the big boxes or combat patrols, and I'm really committed to just adding one unit at a time to this army, just buying one unit at a time and then painting it. So let me know which box you think I should buy next or convert out of parts that I might already have. Also, before we go, as always, I would like to extend a huge thank you to all of our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com slash Dana Howell. I really appreciate all of your support. Happy Orktober. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see all of you in the next video.